Welcome to the China Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Xi's quest for ethnic unity turns Genghis Khan into new danger. The rest of Asia can benefit from the EU China chill. Distressed debt firm SC Lowy finds China credit uninvestable. China stocks test critical support levels as sell off deepens. The yuan is finally showing some muscle in international trade. Xi's quest for ethnic unity turns Genghis Khan into new danger. Bloomberg Chinese President Xi Jinping is cracking down on ethnic minorities in China's peripheral regions, fearing that their diversity poses a threat to the Communist Party. This campaign is part of Xi's efforts to forge a national Chinese identity that promotes the culture and language of the ethnic Han majority. Inner Mongolia, a region of China with a significant Mongolian population, has been a particular focus of these efforts. The Chinese government has implemented measures to water down ethnic differences in Inner Mongolia, including rewriting history, banning theatre performances, and restricting the Mongolian language in schools. These moves have led to protests and criticism both domestically and internationally. Western countries have already taken action against China over human rights abuses in regions like Xinjiang, and Inner Mongolia could become another flashpoint. Furthermore, these measures pose a risk for investors due to concerns about domestic unrest and possible punitive action from the US and its allies. Xi's campaign against ethnic minorities is driven by a fear that divisions in Chinese society could be exploited by domestic and foreign adversaries. The rest of Asia can benefit from the EU-China chill. Bloomberg A record number of European companies have said that doing business in China is getting more difficult, according to a recent survey. The EU's relationship with China has been strained due to issues such as trade tensions, lack of market access, and concerns over human rights and Beijing's violation of international rules. Meanwhile, China's economy is slowing down and the EU is waking up to the fact that other nations could offer more in terms of political ties and economic growth. The EU is looking towards Southeast Asia and India as alternative markets for trade and investment. Distressed debt firm SC Lowy finds China credit uninvestable. Bloomberg Credit investor SC Lowy Financial HK Limited has limited exposure to China and considers the credit space in the country to be uninvestable due to murky legal proceedings and poor corporate disclosure. The lack of clear legal process and financial information makes China more of a macro thesis rather than a detailed corporate analysis, according to the firm's CEO, Michel Lowy. SC Lowy has been reducing its exposure to China since at least May 2022 due to uncertainties and longer-than-expected debt restructuring by the country's distressed developers. However, the firm remains optimistic about the prospect of private credit in Asia, particularly in Korea and India. China stocks test critical support levels as sell-off deepens. Bloomberg Chinese stock benchmarks are approaching critical technical levels, indicating the possibility of further losses. The global pessimism surrounding China's economy, fragile recovery, and real estate crisis has led to continued foreign outflows. Moody's downgrade of China's sovereign and corporate ratings has also added to the headwinds. The Hang Seng Index is nearing a long-term trend line, while the Shanghai Composite Index and CSI 300 Index are also approaching key support levels. These factors suggest that the Chinese stock market may face further declines. The yuan is finally showing some muscle in international trade. Bloomberg The yuan's share as a global payments currency has almost doubled this year, reaching 3.6% in October, according to Bloomberg. While the US dollar remains dominant at 47%, analysts suggest the increase in yuan use could be the most serious challenge to the greenback's dominance yet. China's currency is being boosted in part by Chinese banks lending overseas in their local currency and through the country's currency swap lines with other central banks. Open House, Hong Kong's property downturn may yet save century-old townhouse. Bloomberg A real estate slump in Hong Kong is helping to preserve a 1920s townhouse in the mid-levels district that is up for sale for the first time in decades. The property market in Hong Kong is depressed with government revenue from land sales set for a record low this year as developers hold off adding to their land bank. 
sales of homes are also on track to be the lowest ever, and home prices have plunged more than 20% from their 2021 high. Typically, a low-rise property like the townhouse in question would be demolished for redevelopment rights, but demand has collapsed and mortgage rates have surged, making redevelopment less appealing. The townhouse is on the market for 141 million Hong Kong dollars, 18 million dollars. Potential buyers include a family office looking to convert the building into a boutique hotel, as well as a real estate developer. The property is a grade 2 listed building, meaning it is of special merit and should be selectively preserved, but redevelopment is still possible. China won't win trust of Japan and South Korea, Kurt Campbell. Nikkei Asia. China will not be able to build the same level of trust that the US currently enjoys with Japan and South Korea, according to Kurt Campbell, the US Deputy Secretary of State nominee for the Indo-Pacific. Speaking at a Senate Foreign Relations Committee confirmation hearing, Campbell said that China recognized that the most significant change to the Asian security landscape would be if Japan and South Korea could put their animosity behind them and focus on the future. Campbell also expressed concern that North Korea was no longer interested in diplomacy with the US and that deterrence would be the focus going forward. US rules force South Korea's EV battery makers to rethink China deals. Nikkei Asia South Korean battery makers are facing an uncertain future as the US government proposes new guidelines that would affect global battery supply chains. The guidelines state that a joint venture would be classified as a foreign entity of concern, FEOC, if a company under control of one of four designated countries, including China, holds a stake of 25% or more in it. Joint ventures classified as FEOCs would be ineligible for tax credits and grants under the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. To qualify, South Korean battery makers would need to negotiate with their Chinese counterparts to reduce their stake to less than a quarter or give up on the U.S. market. The U.S. government says the guidelines will encourage diversified and resilient supply chains for critical minerals and battery components but it has also made clear that their purpose is to ensure that the US leads the EV market. Dear viewers, I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the sixth dimension, here to bring you the latest news from around the world. Let's dive right in. First, we have President Eleven Jinping's crackdown on ethnic minorities in China's peripheral regions. Xi's quest for ethnic unity has turned Genghis Khan into a new danger. The Chinese government's measures to water down ethnic differences in Inner Mongolia have led to protests and criticism. This campaign, driven by fear of divisions in Chinese society, not only poses a risk for investors but also raises concerns about possible punitive action from Western countries. Next, we have a report on the EU-China chill. A record number of European companies find doing business in China more difficult, leading the EU to seek alternative markets in Southeast Asia and India. As China's economy slows down, the EU realizes that other nations could offer more in terms of political ties and economic growth. In the financial world, distressed debt firm SC Lowy considers China's credit space to be uninvestable due to murky legal proceedings and poor corporate disclosure. On the other hand, the yuan is showing some muscle in international trade, with its share as a global payments currency almost doubling this year. While the US dollar remains dominant, the increase in yuan use could be a serious challenge to the greenback's dominance. Moving on to the property market, Hong Kong's real estate slump may yet save a century-old townhouse from demolition. The depressed property market has made redevelopment less appealing, preserving the historic building for potential buyers. In geopolitics, the U.S. Deputy Secretary of State nominee for the Indo-Pacific, Kurt Campbell, believes that China will not be able to build the same level of trust as the U.S. with Japan and South Korea. He also expressed concern about North Korea's disinterest in diplomacy with the U.S. Lastly, South Korean battery makers are facing uncertainty as new U.S. guidelines could affect global battery supply chains. The guidelines would classify joint ventures with Chinese stakeholders as foreign entities of concern, making them ineligible for certain benefits. South Korean battery makers would need to negotiate with their Chinese counterparts to reduce their stake or give up on the US market. In conclusion, 
President Xi's campaign against ethnic minorities, the EU China chill, China's uninvestable credit space, the Chinese stock market's decline, the yuan's rise in international trade, Hong Kong's property downturn, and the challenges faced by South Korean battery makers all highlight the complex and ever evolving dynamics in the region. As always, I welcome your thoughts and questions. What are your views on these news stories? Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring. Dr. Six. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.